Libyan regime was basically built on uh, uh, a series of shifting plates, instability, chaos, competing centers of power. Um, these, uh, you know, that was sort of how the, the lack of, 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 of consistency and of stability was actually its, its strength uh, in a way. When the Arab Spring came along, um, basically, uh, this is one of the main arguments of my of the book, is that the Libya p became a uh, one of the only places within the sort of array of states that were in in in, in tumult at that point, in which uh, the United States could act and not risk a a uh, uh, a series of other uh, consequences, of which could be you know tr tremendous, like Syria. Conflict there was very much very you know was seen to be you know uh, intractable uh, you know if uh, Syria is connected to to Iran to has a great influence in Lebanon uh, the the whole sectarian um, uh, situation there was such that you know m uh, some some conflict could, could threaten to basically uh, uh, destroy a whole range of of, of of relationships which were very important uh, to, to to the U S Egypt and Tunisia were you know basically the the re rebellions had already reached a certain point. Uh, uh, ben Ali had been essentially, uh, you know, uh, removed by the end of December. Uh, and Egypt, the United States, had been criticized for being a bit too late on the ball and in trying to decide what exactly they wanted to do about it. Uh, Libya, uh, at that point, was in the process of, uh, uh, of, of organizing its own revolution. And in effect, you know, after the 2009 speech by Obama, the New Beginning speech that he made in, in, in Cairo, in which he promised to stand with the Arab street against tyranny, uh, it, it would be a bit uh, uh, bizarre if the United States weren't to do anything. And I think Libya presented a, almost a unique and almost, in retrospect, an inevitable uh, consequence of, of, of those statements. If uh, we take our attention away from, assume that there seems to be this sort of uh, tacit uh, feeling or bureaucratic uh, kind of drift in which uh, Libya becomes, uh, you know, it's almost like, well, we've done this and we're going to move on and focus on Syria, other other places. Right now, Libya needs a tremendous amount of help in in uh, in its quest to build up uh, state institutions. I think the United States should 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 and and. Uh, and uh, hopefully will play a, uh, an increasing role in, in helping uh, uh, the country um, uh, build its, uh, its, uh, its capacity in terms of uh, not only governance, but, uh, but medical, uh, tra basic infrastructure. Um, you know, Libya has been neglected for, uh, uh, for, for many years, and um, it's sort of paradoxical that it has all this money, but, uh, but is in many ways a, uh, a, a very developing country. I and several colleagues were in uh, in Benghazi at the, at, uh, on the 10th, 11th, and and and, and 12th, and um, much of our uh, knowledge of what happened uh, uh, stems from a series of conversations that I had with um, well, one conversation with Ambassador Stevens about uh, two uh, two hours before the attack occurred, and then after that with um, uh, a couple of conversations with his uh, one of his security detail, and the last one of those uh, was uh, literally as the attack was taking place. Uh, one thing I can say is that the, you know, uh, I, I absolutely, it's, it's, I find it hard to believe that the, uh, uh, that the Obama is, his administration is, is engaged in some kind of, uh, of conspiracy uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to deny what's, uh, what's happening uh, here for political uh, reasons, um, but uh, uh, clearly, and, and there may be good reasons for, uh, it's unclear exactly why Ambassador Stevens was in Benghazi at that time, and again, I can't comment on on, on, on that, I, other than to say that he wasn't there to visit uh, with us, which was reported in the uh, uh, the, the, the press. Um, um, you know, uh, Benghazi uh, is a uh, it was a vo was a volatile volatile place. Uh, we had uh, s uh, s significant reservations about uh, making this last trip. Um, obviously, it was the anniversary of 9/11. Uh, there was a new government being uh, being appointed, a new prime minister being appointed in Tripoli. Um, yeah, lots of uh, there was a a, a a history of uh, of, uh, of of attacks against high level diplomatic uh, installations over the course of the previous six plus months. Uh, and you have to, you know, we felt uh, not comfortable, but uh, okay at this time going there because we we were not uh, figures of, of, of great importance. Um, um, 
but it was clearly a, a highly, highly dangerous and volatile environment. The other thing I'd say about that is that the, the difference between what's been coming out in the U.S. press versus what's been coming out in the Arab papers is, is quite interesting. Uh, and uh, some of the more complete and uh, detailed uh, uh, accounts, uh, incredible accounts, I think, have, have come from those sources. So far, the, the process of creating uh, uh, viable uh, uh, democratic institutions has moved forward uh, remarkably well. Uh, again, we saw from, this, from the original statement of principles by a small group of unelected uh, people uh, to a, a transitional national, uh, national transitional uh, council that uh, served its term and then uh, uh, went on to basically handed over power at the, uh, on, upon liberation and that there was uh, election, uh, basically free and fair elections for a national cons uh, constitutional assembly uh, and local elections uh, proceeded uh, again. Uh, so the, the local elections in Benghazi in May uh, were, were deemed to be exemplary and uh, that was sort of a model for the elections that were going to take place uh, after that. So, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic about Libya's future and I think that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a region that's a very, actually much more important to U.S. foreign policy, particularly now than, than at any time in the past. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there's a, an interesting paradox, which is that the, you know, again, it's a very wealthy country, but because it's a wealthy country, it's not seen to be administratively or otherwise deserving of, not deserving, but, People, you know, uh, the, the, the mechanics are not there for, for technical assistance and aid to be provided to a very rich country uh, in anticipation of some future payment. And that's actually, it's a simple statement, but it, it, it's causing all sorts of problems at the moment. Yeah.